What's up, guys? So, over the past couple months, um, like, I'm gonna call it mid-January to, like, end of February, so, like, a little winter haul. Uh, over the course of time, I went to different thrift stores, and this is what I found. So, one of the things I recently got was a Ansco Pix Flash. It's a nifty little camera right here. Very plastic and very uh, basic functions. Just has a cover case and a flash button. And that's it. it says focus free. But I did manage to shoot with it recently and load it up to period 200. And hopefully I'll share that with you guys soon. So be on the lookout for that. Another thing I kind of like is uh, getting old school books about the topic you might like and just kind of see what they thought at the time of when it was actually booming. So for example, I got this book that just says 35 millimeter photography. So it's totally geared on that, but it, I will say it is rudimentary, like very basic principles, like different examples of different portrait shoots and what you can do to improve. And I also got another one, which is the, it kind of seemed like the same thing, but it's just, I guess a little bit different. One's more, I guess more intense or longer in depth. This one you have 35 millimeter photography. And this one is the 35 millimeter photography complete guide. So it is by two different authors, but this one kind of goes more intensive in kind of similar subjects than this one. I mean, who knows? It might even give you a different perspective or maybe even something new that you might want to try. Like for example, in this one it has techniques and it has children and babies. I guess it has some, like some tricks and tips on how to shoot them. And it had like a uh, travel and leisure, photography, landscape, poses, like <laughs> even something out of this might get a concept like a style shoot, like the way this kid is set up right here. So it's always dope to go back to the basics and even though you might know it all, just to pick up a new little trick or two. So first up, I'm not sure if this actually works or not. I haven't tested it out per se, but it looks like a, a miniature or like a lab mic of some sort. So I got it in this plastic bag and got it just for $1. So I was like, $1? Why not? And then I got this case right here for about $2. It's a pretty good, looks like a miniature camera case. It's good for probably about one camera and maybe some extra stuff. And then also I um, kind of saw this widespread of comics and I'm just always interested in just certain things of what I like and like oh okay I'll try that I might read it or I might just collect it and it wouldn't just happen to be this one right here and I know it's not the best condition or like mint condition but I'm pretty sure at least from what I looked up that it's like the first time that Punisher and the Spider-Man was in the same comics so I think that's a pretty good find if you know anything about this, let me know down below. But I got it for like either $2 or something like that. I think that's still a steal. And then speaking of steals, I got some expired film just for 25 cents. And it's Kodak Max and it expired back in 2003. And then next to the comics, I actually saw a flimsy paper and the owner said it actually was with a camera, but the camera is long gone and the sheet of paper is just here so he said you can just have it on the house it was a guide to advanced photography with minolta slr cameras and accessories <laughs> so basically all about minolta and even next up in the same store i got this little guy for 25 cents maybe sometime i can do a uh, cheap camera challenge so now i can try with this and then i also got Bivitar Focus Free PN 2001. But, okay, before I say that, I got this for a dollar. So I feel like that's still pretty good. But the uh, rewind button just keeps rewinding. It doesn't actually stop. So I guess I gotta figure out and how to solve that. If you guys know, let me know down below how to solve that. But it looks like it has P mode on here. I guess for 
panoramic. So, so I mean, hopefully if I can get this working for a dollar, I can test it out if it is actually panoramic or if it's just a regular point and shoot. But yeah, this book, The Nature of Photographs, is really interesting to read. And it has different examples of different iconic shots. All in all, this is a really good essential book just to good reflect on and hopefully get a deeper meaning of what a photograph and photography is. And then another book that she found from the same store. This one is the biggest out of them all. Of course, I haven't read this whole thing yet, but <laughs> it's photography. But I mean, it's mainly film photography because this book was made back in the day. And so the beginning kind of talks about photography from a few different other people and how they use that day to day work. And then it talks about different cameras, single reflex camera to medium format, to different lenses. And then it goes super in depth of lenses, what kind of lenses to use, aperture, exposure, a really in depth feel. One thing that's kind of cool is the uh, the water analogy for the exposure. And I kind of recently found a video of that, which might be kind of helpful if you're still struggling with the aperture analogy. So I'll leave a link for that down below so maybe you can check it out. It's kind of similar to this as well. I mean, this is by far a great textbook to have a quick reference to buy because it's kind of easy to follow and really good examples. I mean, it is kind of beat up. The original price was $28 looks like from the sticker, but I got it for maybe, what, $2 or a couple bucks. So I think that's a pretty good seal on knowledge. And another thing I got while I was walking around was a little bag. This is LTX series. No idea what it was originally used for, but it's really great for a compact camera. So I'm going to spit this bad boy right on in. And then also further down in the aisles, still looking just to see if something may just catch your eye out of the miscellaneous. And sure enough, <laughs> I got this thing right here for a dollar. And it's from Bodum, I think, which is a great company for French press. Got this whole thing just for a dollar. And then, I mean, I already have a French press, but I know it's always good to have maybe two. This is the original one that I got from the same company. And then you had this one, perfectly fine, and for a dollar. Thrifting may be hard at times, because as you're looking, you may not be able to find something, or you might find something and it doesn't quite work. And that's kind of what happened when I found this Minolta camera, or Jocelyn found it, and she picked it up. And we're like, oh, cool, but... It's missing the rewind knob. We got it right here. Ten dollars, boy. Ten dollars. What you got? Still works. That's why it's ten dollars. It needs the knob. So it shoots. Seemed like it worked fine, but and the glass looked pretty good. But it seemed like the knob might have been more than the camera because the camera was. I think about ten dollars and then to get the rewind knob replaced that might have been more than the price of itself but we did manage to find a good camera at the very end of that big goodwill and we we're like right at checkout i'm kind of bum bummed because we didn't quite see a nifty little film camera in whole big old warehouse but right as we're checking out we look over to our right and on the register there's a camera just laying there <laughs> So we asked the clerk, hey, is someone waiting for that? Or is that just for sale? And they're like, yeah, that's for sale. So we asked to check it out. And we decided to cop for $6. And it's the Yashica TL Electric X. So we tested quickly the shutter speed in different modes. Now, I don't know anything about this, but right now, the lens is off, and it's clicking fine, but when I looked at the viewfinder, it's uh, it's blank. 
So I'm not sure if the mirror behind it is not working or it's if, if it's a Yashica Electro, maybe it needs a battery for it to manually work. <laughs> you know, if you use film cameras slash film digital, you never know what you actually need a battery for. Like some cameras operate without a battery and some actually need a battery to work. I'm gonna have to look this up, but if you guys know anything about this camera or Yashica Electro X, let me know down below. So that was our really cool film camera that we found out of the, all those stores, Yashica Electro X. And now one that I didn't, wasn't there for, but Jocelyn found at a different Goodwill at a like, different time a month prior was Yashica Pentatomic. When you look it up, that's Yashica's first SLR, single reflex camera. So that's a pretty good find, if I don't say so. So yeah, that's a really cool find that she found, and also the one that we found up there, Yashica Electro X. I think that's a pretty dope find out of all of these. I mean, everything that we showed you, I think that's pretty dope. The thing that I'm really excited to test out is this little toy camera, because <laughs> I've always seen like cheap camera challenges and people trying to make the most out of the worst conditions. Hope for the best, pray for the worst. And also, speaking of that, there's a camera challenge called the Shitty Camera Challenge. <laughs> and that's basically any camera, like this one, or this one. And if the battery costs more than a camera, then that counts. And you basically just shoot it with that, and you can enter in a contest. I'll leave that down below, and hopefully you guys can get submit. Alright, that's a wrap up for today. Let me know if you guys want to see anything again out of all of these, which one to see me use next. And until next time, make the ordinary extraordinary.